Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hindi, the Android Authority App Guy, and it's about that time of month to round up the best Android apps from April of 2016. If you want to check out any of these applications, we'll have those links for you in the video description below. Dictionary Lingui is a translation dictionary that allows you to look up words, find their definition, and translate them into a variety of other languages complete with example sentences. It comes with a quick search, offline mode, and pronunciation which rounds out an already impressive set of features. This is a great tool for travelers, people learning second languages, and anyone looking to expand their vocabulary. It's free to download with no in-app purchases. Encode is a beginner's programming application that teaches you the basics of programming. It uses JavaScript to teach the basics, but all of the concepts are fairly universal, which makes it a great starter application for those who have never programmed, but you definitely want to start. It has sections for numbers, strings, booleans, variables, if statements, and other basics. It's free to download and use, with its only weakness being that there's really nothing here for intermediate or advanced programmers. Jippy technically existed as an extension to Facebook Messenger, but April saw a time of great change for the app. It has been re-released as a standalone application capable of searching for GIFs and sharing them just about anywhere that you want. You can search by keyword or category if you prefer or check out what's trending. There are a ton of categories including moods, reactions, and there is even GIF emoji that you can download and use. It's all entirely free which is just a cherry on top. MailTime is a newer email client that allows you to organize your emails in a chat-like order so you can communicate with people more easily. It allows you to connect to a variety of services including Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, Mail.ru, and many others. Once connected, your emails will be organized by sender with the interface looking a whole lot like your standard messaging application. It's free to use and a great app to pick up if you communicate through email a whole bunch. Quote is an RSS reader in an age where RSS readers don't really get made anymore. It focuses on simplicity where the experience revolves around just you and your RSS feeds. There are no recommendation engines getting in the way or anything ridiculous. It has support for Feedly and I Know Reader, which is great if you use one or both of those services. The free version gives you the basics including a light and dark theme, gesture navigation, and offline reading options. Going Pro removes the advertising, adds themes, and support for multiple accounts. Recolor is a coloring book application that's meant for adults. This is part of the wave of adult coloring books that promotes relaxation and creativity. The application features over 700 coloring pictures with new ones being added on a daily basis. They are categorized into difficulty levels ranging from beginner to expert, depending on how complex you want your coloring experience to be. Many images are free, but you'll have to fork out for some using in-app purchases. The application is free to download by itself. Reddit released their nascent application in April to unfairly negative reviews. You see, most people use powerful third-party Reddit apps and were disappointed that the official app wasn't like one of them. It is, however, a perfectly decent and usable Reddit application for casual users, which was all it was ever meant to be. It embraces material design and allows for basic navigation and interaction. It is still working through some early release bugs, but it's a good application nevertheless. Slidebox is a photo organizer application, which is really just a fancy way of calling it a gallery app. With this one, you can delete photos, sort photos into albums, group photos that look similar and compare them, and a whole lot more. It also organizes your images where they are so it doesn't mess with the functionality of any other applications. It's missing a few features like SD card support, but it's an otherwise good effort that's completely free to download and use. Facemaker is developed by us too, the same developers who brought us the hit game Monument Valley. This application is for Android Wear users and it gives you two template watch faces that you can customize and control. It has a variety of customization options and you can really create some unique watch faces with this app. It's not as in-depth as something like Facer, but it's entirely free and it's much easier to use. Yahoo Esports is, as you may have guessed, an application that covers the world of esports. It covers a variety of games including MOBAs, fighters, shooters, and big ones such as League of Legends. It's a good looking application that's easy to navigate and you'll have access to news, live video, recorded video, highlights, events, and tons of other content. It's one of only a few good esports apps out there and it's worth a shot if you're into these kinds of things. And that about does it for this month, folks. If you want even more Android Apps news, check out my Android Apps Weekly show that airs every Sunday. We have it linked in the video description below and there on the screen if you want to check out the latest episode. Don't forget to keep it tuned to Android Authority because we are your source for all things Android. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.